Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. On this episode, we're going to be um, talking about a bunch of different topics as I don't have um, current events and things of that nature. A couple old things we're going to touch on also. Um, considering I don't have a guest in studio with me, so I'm not doing any interviews or anything. But we have Shadow on the line. <laughs> okay, so um, first up, we're going to discuss Toys R Us closing and, you know, the whole iPad tablet epidemic with children and how they don't play with toys and everything anymore. So the first thing I thought of when I heard that was like, duh, of course, because <laughs> like I said, like most kids aren't outside playing anymore. They're not really, you know, what I'm saying interacting with each other outside of school for the most part. And even in school, they're using tablets, too. So you know I'm saying Toys R Us, like I was listening to Breakfast Club and they said something like, you know, they didn't grow with the times. Which is true. Yeah. So <laughs> because. Exactly. And a lot of things that I've been seeing and hearing also is that like kids apparently like they like to watch YouTube of other kids playing with toys. That is very true. My little brother does that. <laughs> How old is your little brother? Four. Yeah, that's that's wild. So it's like all along the age range because I know six year olds who are doing it. I know 10 year olds like it's it's that's wild to me because when I was a kid, like Toys R Us was a shit. <laughs> Like, I, don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with this generation where they like to see other people have fun instead of them having fun. Kind of weird, but also understandable. Because <laughs> I feel like some people in this day and age are very antisocial, or they're so caught up on with the electronics they don't know how to interact with other people. Yeah, yeah, but these are kids, though. You know what I'm saying? Like the kids are the same way because I. People, kids go to school and all they want to do is either watch things on Netflix that they shouldn't be watching <laughs> and um, videos of, of kids playing toys with their toys. They would have the toys in front of them. They play with it for five minutes and then they bored. It's, it's not, I don't know why it's not the same, but I think like parents tell their kids to go to school and it comes to electronics. Well, yeah, I was going to say that too because that's not something, that's learned behavior because if you took away the iPads and didn't introduce it to them originally, then, you know what I'm saying, they wouldn't have that option. You get what I'm saying? Like, if it wasn't introduced, like, here, like, the first thing I noticed is, like, a lot of people, to get them out of the way or whatever, they hand them the iPad, they hand them the phone, and it starts from there. You get me? Like, one time, you're like, go outside, go do something, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, yeah, that's very true. And then it becomes something where it's not about shutting them up. It's them like asking for it now. It, it becomes mommy, can I get this or auntie or uncle or whatever. So it and then starts you try to from break that. them out of it. Mm -hmm. It's not hard because they're so used to it. You can't put a toy in front of them and expect them to be like, they want to get you like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you mentioned um, watching Netflix and thing. And, you know, I'm like I said, with growing out and phasing out and everything, growing with the times of Toys R Us, they're saying that, you know, people aren't having kids anymore <laughs> or the population like children. It's not as much as before, which is partially true. But at the same time, like I said, they didn't grow with the times and they didn't think about, you know, hey, we can do interactive things that aren't, mm -hmm. you know, just regular toys that are non-electronic or just like the regular things you can do like ipad based games because i remember when i was about nine i had one of those vtech things like the computer things yeah it was green and white. yeah <laughs> like the old school black and white screen and everything and those were cool but i feel like you know what I'm saying that was before we had computers in the houses though i'm showing my age but you know what i'm saying you we had those but I mean, with technology, you could have so many other toys that incorporate this also. They they just gave us the internet, which just, just messed up everything. Yeah. The internet ruined all these kids in their minds. They no longer have a childhood because <laughs> of the internet. Well, I blame yeah. the internet. You're blaming the internet. <laughs> and, and I blame Toys R Us for not getting their life together. So I don't feel, I, I wouldn't say... I'm just saying it's it's not that much. I don't think it would affect anybody if they closed. Except for the people that's working there. 
Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Baby Zarusa is closing too, apparently. So that's another thing. But I mean, the whole idea of growing. Baby Zarusa is closing? Yeah. They're all under like the same umbrella. But. Where's Zarusa can go? But babies are us. A lot of people are saying, a lot of people I know who have kids are saying that babies are us is too expensive. Like the things that you can get at babies are us, you can get similar things for way cheaper at like Walmart or Target and Amazon. (laughs) All the RSs can go. Yeah, apparently, apparently. But you know what I'm saying? I think about that and I also, it makes me think of like, you don't necessarily have to worry about putting kids on leashes anymore with this because they're not running off to do. to do things too much because they have an iPad in front of them. They quote unquote behave better now. Sometimes. Sometimes. Unless you take it away from them, then it's a whole nother then story. They throw temper tantrums. Mm-hmm. But um I would say yeah, probably they do behave more because they're so in tune to what they're watching or what they're doing. It's just you have to monitor what they're watching. Yeah. Especially for the younger kids because I feel like some stuff they shouldn't be watching mm-hmm. and they they're a little bit too grown. Yeah. At the age of four, you, you're doing too much. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's based on how you set up things too because you also have to look at the age range of the parents also because some parents don't know how to maneuver these things to do like the parental controls that block out like everything where it gives you the option to um search ther- certain things. And mm-hmm. there's some of them where, well, I can't even say that because some of these kids know their parents' passwords on things too, so. That's true. Yeah. That's true. You you got to make up some fancy stuff. But I mean, some some parents th- think, I w- I'm not even going to say some, but from what I've seen, they it's it's safer for their kids. And I was like, well, visually, it can damage them mentally. Yeah. Sort of, kind of. And but, you socially. Know, but, you know, and socially, because, you know, they don't want to talk to people. But I don't know. I, mean, I don't I, I can only imagine what the next generation is going to look like or what they're going to deal with, because... Toys R Us is going to be gone. Babies R Us is going to be gone. Walmart is going to go up in sales, mm-hmm. as they always do. Of course. Walmart, yeah, they, they, they are here doing it. They winning for themselves, but that's another subject. But, you know what I'm saying, the whole Toys R Us thing, like I said, that sucks. And like I said, with Growing With The Times, I heard that Disney is going to make Elsa gay. <laughs> They're giving Elsa a girlfriend for Frozen. See, there's for me, there's no problem with that. But I know Disney's going to get major backlash for that. Of course. They're going to say they're pushing the gay agenda. And then you have all the parents. I'm not I'm gonna, not going to watch my, have my kids watch Disney and da-da-da. And then only God knows what Disney's going to do to try to keep their names sane, even though they're like the worst <laughs> but in everything. That's crazy to me because you look at older Disney movies, like the classics, and you you hear all the stories about like the phallic symbols in Aladdin and mm-hmm. like all these other sexual innuendos and the certain sly remarks that they make in these cartoons that are way older, like from when I was growing up and beyond then. And parents, um, I, I wasn't around then to know how they were thinking about it, but you don't know if they were okay with that at the time. They probably watched it and was like, wait a minute, but... True. They're going to have a huge issue with the quote unquote gay agenda if they put like a openly gay like a message in these movies because they're so worried about their children turning gay. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with that. I mean, the, uh, Disney has tried it once with one show, but it wasn't animated. It was two boys. I think it was camping. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> But they had major backlash for that and canceled the show. Yeah, that's... that's so crazy. for now you wanted to do it animated, it's not going to be any different. But, I mean, if she does, go Elsa. But <laughs> if they do it, they, they have to prepare themselves for the backlash and don't try to flip it on people. I'm sure they the will, the though. I'm sure they will because... They can go jump off a of bridge. <laughs> I'm sure they will because, you know, they're probably going to use the excuse that they're growing with the times also because, you know... It's cool to be yeah, gay now. Like they're they're, they're trying well. to do well. Let's hope not. I hope Disney have people in their offices that have enough sense to make this a uh, as I mean, smooth they transition. Should. They should because ABC Family has a show. Don't remember the name right now. So, and plus they're not paying me, so I'm not gonna go ahead and tell them. <laughs> but there's um like they have a family where two girls were swapped at birth, and one girl has two female parents. Hmm. And she growing perfectly fine. 
She yeah. has a boyfriend and everything. Exactly. So, but, and but they, ABC doesn't get any backlash for that, but not many people know ABC and Disney is one. Yeah, but you also think about this, like that's not an animated thing. They don't think that that's feeding the idea to the children. And my standpoint, that- girl, mm-hmm. people think that you can turn people gay. That's why. Because they see enough oh, of yeah, it, they're like, going to do you, it. Like you, if you get a shot that you're, you're gay? Yeah. You take a certain pill, you turn Yeah. Gay. Yeah, that's the society we live in. It's yeah, so of course. You you watch enough TV, you see two people of the same gender kissing, and then you're all of a sudden gay. I mean, there's so many gay people who watch heterosexual TV all their lives, and guess what? And there's... they ain't kissing no straight <laughs> So, you know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. And... You know, I thought it was crazy because um, I don't know if you've heard of the um, the new comic thing on, was that CW? I don't remember what channel it's on. Black Lightning, the superhero movie, uh-huh. Black Family. And there's a one of the characters is a lesbian. She's a superhero uh-huh. also, which I thought was fucking dope. Like, my opinions so on the show. Are, yeah. Hmm. Like, I, <laughs> my you, thoughts on the show I, are kind of. Eh. Getting a superhero, I fucked with it. Yes, I'm here for it. And it's a black superhero. Well, it's not a family, but the dad's a superhero. He's Black Lightning. And then he has two daughters. And one of them is a lesbian. A lesbian happens to be the one that also has powers. And she's like experimenting with it and all that other stuff. But I saw that and I was like, yo, that's dope as hell. Because, you know what I'm saying? The first thing, like with Black Panther, you see little kids out here, you know, Wakanda forever and all this, because Black Panther is putting this for people who've never read a comic before, or people who are comic book fans and know about Black Panther. That's like a mm-hmm. big deal. So, I mean, it's always the subject of seeing people that look like you to know that something isn't wrong with me in a sense. You know what I'm saying? It gives you a sense of confidence in to be who you are when you see people like you being portrayed in media and things like that. So... My whole thing about the gay, the Elsa getting a girlfriend or putting any kind of gay thing in TV or whatever, it's like, what about the kids who, you know what I'm saying, who already are questioning or who already feel like, you know, they might be attracted to the same gender. They might, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they can see this and be like, whew, okay, like, I'm all right. I'm not alone in this world. You get me? It It helps a little bit because then that can also open up a line of communication with parents and all these things. You can be like, mommy, I see so-and-so and so, and I feel like, you know, whatever. Hopefully your parents aren't completely ignorant and realize that, you know, hey, my child has questions. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, hopefully with the way things are going nowadays and people are getting more information about LGBT and all this stuff that it and won't be... understanding it and or, not being judgmental. Exactly. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, that can help with lord these suicide rates <laughs> and all these other things and you know the negativity and all the social awkwardness and all these things that come with you know what I'm saying questioning yourself and not feeling accepted as a result of you know same sex yeah. love <laughs> you know what I'm saying but that's that's my thing um to backtrack a little bit on black panther um i remember seeing something a couple of weeks back about amanda stanberg um and saying how like she was propositioned for a role in Black Panther, but she felt like, thankfully, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, due to her skin tone, her being, she's like really fierce. She likes skin. <laughs> so she felt yeah, she like... She said it's time for the Blacks to shine. Mm-hmm. The she wanted... The Blacks, I'm sorry. Exactly. Sorry to the light skin. <laughs> it is our time. Because darkies don't get... No, on, hold it Don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not, I ain't racist darkies, Okay. <laughs> We are dark, and it, it was our time to shine. So I do respect her for moving out of the way mm-hmm. and giving us an opportunity to show that there's a whole bunch of other darkies out here. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? It's also with the whole appropriation thing because with Storm, for people who actually read the comic book for X-Men and everything, people know that Storm was chocolate. Like, Storm wasn't this... She was dark. Storm was nowhere near (laughs) fucking Halle Berry's complexion or like all these other people that, you know what I'm saying, are like, oh, I want to... I saw this girl on Twitter saying that she wanted to play Storm. When I looked, the girl is like fair as hell i'm like can you not like yes you're beautiful you're (laughs) probably not (laughs) though because you know hollywood wants people to be aesthetically pleasing and aesthetically pleasing to them is either you know white or damn near close so yeah it their time is is, is, is (laughs) it's coming soon after after black panther came out trust me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and all those beautiful chocolate people in Black Panther, I was like, yeah. They're not ready for the darkness that's about to take over. There was some foolishness going on on Twitter about that, about how there weren't any light-skinned people in <laughs> in Black Panther See, and Wakanda. I, want, I, have, I have to say this. I need all the light skins to chill out. Y'all have y'all time all the time. <laughs> Please let the darkies have their moment. Oh y'all in everything. Darkies. Yes, I'm a darkie. <laughs> um, all the light skins get their time all the time. Y'all on every damn screen. All the makeup commercials. Listen, it's time for the darkies, okay? This ain't no light versus dark. Kind of is, but still. <laughs> darkies forever. Wakanda forever. Thank you. Black of the berry, the sweet of the juice, right? Thank you. <laughs> said it there. Oh gosh. I mean, you speaking facts. I'm not saying, you know, time for them to phase out, but I mean, give people respect where it's due. Like don't put somebody that's, you know, white or light skin. Them. Exactly. Especially if you're if you're modeling something after a story or after something that there's a visual for already. Especially if there's like a description of someone as dark or as of you know what I'm saying? Like don't just blatantly don't be like do blackface. Oh, gosh. I'm gonna blow something up. Yeah, I'll like yeah, that's that's a whole nother thing. Just let just give dark skin people the roles. Don't just that's it. That's it. Just yeah. give people the roles that they're they that were created for them. <laughs> um, speaking of roles created for people, I saw um uh, something about RuPaul's Drag Race. For anyone who's not familiar, RuPaul has a show um where it's basically <laughs> it's kind of like A N T M but for drag. It, they do mm-hmm. missions, they do competitions, they do all this fun stuff. They're all in a house and, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, it's a bunch of boys that do yeah. drag and they are lit. Like, the shit is awesome. If you've never watched it, watch it. I haven't seen it in a really long time. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But, I mean, I keep up here and there. Like, I see random clips and I'll be like, oh, shit, what's going on? And I'll go watch and whatever. Some of these girls are, like, sickening. So, they, someone asked him about having a trans woman on dragways and his response was no we can't have a drag person on drag race a trans woman on tra- um, dragways and uh-huh. a lot of people who don't understand drag culture and the, the difference between being trans and being drag would question why he would say that you know what i'm saying because uh-huh. for someone who doesn't know better he'd be like what's the difference <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, and yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I mean, like I said, a lot of people don't know better. But based on my opinion and the things that I've seen, the things that I know, drag is an art form. It is, it's a culture. It's a whole, it's entertainment as a whole also. Like if you've never been to a drag show, if you've never seen people actually perform in drag, the whole, the basic concept of it is men dress up as these friggin' divas like usually they have like the bomb ass hair extreme makeup and is like done well like it is like beat for the fucking gods like (laughs) faces be lit (laughs) you know what i'm saying hair laid they have on like their body suits and everything those who add hips add hips those who add hats they have their boobs they have their gowns they dress to the shit and they go up and they lip sync they perform they dance you know what i'm saying they perform for an audience uh-huh. trans women live their lives as women. They, you know what I'm saying? It's not a performance for them. They, this is a day-to-day, uh-huh. they feel misgendered. Uh-huh. Drag, they're boys in regular, like, <laughs> in everyday life, they're they're boys. They might, you know, dress up one day, put on, go in full drag and be out in the world. But at the end of the day, they take all that shit off, they untuck and they carry on with their lives as men. Of course, you know, they call each other sis and girl and all this stuff, but gay effeminate men they do that it's not something to say i think you're a girl but you know what i'm saying it's uh-huh. that's just the culture of it so him saying no i was like okay i understand why because it is for men who dress up you know what i'm saying men who men participate who in this what's that mm-hmm. men that love to perform exactly like you know what i'm saying it's kind of like um burlesque and like cabaret like it's it's an art form Right mm-hmm. now, my issue with his response, though, was he said something about there's a previous um, season where they did have someone that was transitioning, but they didn't have yeah. surgery yet. <laughs> Until after the show. Exactly. 
And he said that was okay because, quote unquote, there was still a boy. Still male. Still, they were still male before the actual transitioning. Yes. I was shocked when I read that because I'm like, RuPaul? Like, <laughs> I feel like he should have known better than to say that. You get me? Because. I mean, but you know, RuPaul doesn't hold his tongue for any tell how it is. But I mean, I get where he was going, it, going with it. It may have came out wrong. Yeah, or but the way we're, reading, we're probably reading it. No, there's no, there's there's no misreading that he blatantly was on some. If you have surgery, then you're a woman. If you don't have surgery, then you're a boy, and you can participate in drag race as long as you don't. I but my thing is, you can't say if you identify as, but you don't have surgery. That's that's mm -hmm. that's fucked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's one thing that a lot of trans people are dealing with and have a problem with. It's like, I don't have surgery yet, so people aren't going to respect me as the gender that I identify as. Sure. Now, my thing is, I personally don't understand why a trans woman would want to do drag. I mean, I understand it's probably fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You yeah. get to dress up and do all this or whatever. Maybe the opportunity to do, to get money, but... You do drag and then you take off all the makeup and everything, but then you go back to living your life as a woman. A woman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how much of a contrast is it if you already, especially ones who've maybe had they surgery? Just like the extra, I think, and maybe it's the extraness that is entertaining or something that they love doing, whether they, you know, they are a woman at the end of the day after the transitioning. Um, I, I would just say I think it's more of an entertaining thing for them to be left doing it. They love to perform just like when the males do it and it's just for an hour or a certain amount of time they do it for. So I'm, I I would go with that. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt that it's more of a I love performing in this type of setting. Yeah, but there's other ways to perform though. And like, it was. I'm just yeah, speaking from my... Exactly. But like I said, like cabaret you can do burlesque you can do you know what i'm saying there's so many other ways of performing that you can participate in other than jumping to drag because my ignorance is saying that drag is for boys yes. because i've heard of drag kings like women who dress up as men yeah. and they go out and they perform and it's a real thing it's not as popular as drag queens but it does happen it's out there you know <laughs> Yeah, and you know, women. Are, everybody wants to see a female performer, even if it's you know, mm -hmm. you know that it's a male. You, you know, what I'm saying you want to see a female performer because women are awesome. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things that I'm just like, like I I don't understand that portion. Like you, know I'm saying you you mm -hmm. you identify as a woman. You are a woman. Why would you want to take? I'm not gonna say to take it away, but. It was a competition. So in an essence, you were your goal was to get your goal is to win. You don't go in the competition just to be like, oh whatever. I have got nothing better to do. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the mm -hmm. goal is to go on there, you win and you get money, get fame, get all that good stuff or whatever. So why would you want to take that away from people that are like true to this? You know what I'm saying? People that are like out here doing drag for real and like you know what I'm saying? And not to say they're not doing it for real, but I just feel like it you should just leave it to the boys. Like, <laughs> leave it to the boys. You get me? <laughs> well, I don't, like I said, I haven't seen it for a while. So I don't even know. I didn't, I'm probably going to go back and watch that season just to see how. Well, that season, though. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean. Of course. Um, Over the weekend, I saw that RuPaul got um a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I watch his did little... Did he get the whole ceremony? Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> no, he did. He They put him up on a podium. And funny enough, it was... The star is right in front of where they tape his show. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so he was doing his speech and he he's like, you know, this is literally he like looked up at the building, was like, This is right in front of where I take my show. Da 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 he's long speech. He shouted out his sisters, all of them name star with R. <laughs> and oh, it's three of them. It's like three of them, which was Renee, Renika, something something like that. But it's all three of them. And they were there with him. He shouted out his husband. It was like a bunch of other people that, you know what I'm saying, he thanked for being there. And I was just like look at that like he he's the first drag queen well of course (laughs) to get a star on the hollywood walk of fame most people don't know other drag queens though so you know saying but he's the first one to get a a star on the hollywood walk of fame and i'm just like we we are coming a long way we are coming a long way and maybe it you know opens a lot more doors and people actually pay attention and like i said not judgmental but understand what they do or why they do it and understanding that they are people and mm-hmm. they need to like do it the way they want to. And it brings awareness also because, I mean, you know, you're walking down Hollywood Boulevard and you're like, who is this? Google. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't know who RuPaul is for some reason. Uh-huh. But, yeah, and that was just, I was like, go Ru. And I was just like, you know, I was, was hype over the video. Seat? Huh? No, he was in like a colorful, it was like a checkered green and red, like, oh, he looked like, like a Christmas present, kind of. <laughs> Okay. yeah but um i was reading up also because i know a lot of people don't know that he's actually married he's been with his husband for like 20 odd years but 20 23 24 years couple. huh they're a lovely couple yes they are but um they waited well, i shouldn't say they waited but they didn't get married to like their 23rd anniversary last year I was like, yo, yeah, exactly. And a lot of people didn't even know he was in a relationship with someone. And you know what I'm saying? I thought that was dope because, yeah, exactly. But he said something like they got married for tax reasons or something like that. But his husband (laughs) is a rancher. Like, he has a ranch somewhere in the Midwest. Like, I was just like, what? Like, those are the ones to marry. (laughs) Yeah, but he has like acres of land and like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, But Rue was saying, like, you know, when he goes there, he dresses up in, like, really fabulous Western outfits and stuff like that. And I was just like, imagine this man tall. Listen, he is tall as hell. Just coming into town, just, like, fucking fabulous and shit. They're probably looking like, what the fuck? (laughs) You know Well, they're probably used to it by now, too, because, like, I mean, 23 years, like... That's that's dope as fuck. Like a lot of no. a lot of relationships don't even last half that time. So they are doing something right, especially Hollywood okay. people, celebrities and stuff like that. But speaking of you know Hollywood and everything coming growing a little bit with the times and homosexuality, um, did you get a chance to look at the Oscars? No, I didn't. Of course, nobody watches the Oscars. <laughs> nobody watches award shows anymore. Yeah. But they were very gay this year, like. <laughs> No, seriously. (laughs) There was there was a lot of gay representation there. The thing that like fucking gagged me was Adam Pippen was the guy, the figure skater, um, the Olympic figure skater for US who was, you know, kissing his boo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like he listen, he's out here trailblazing. He's like, fuck what y'all think. I'm here, I'm gay, and I'm kicking ass. Like, fuck this. My boy showed up in a fucking tuxedo. With a harness yeah. on. I was like... A what? A harness. <laughs> you know, I like... Watch that. <laughs> you know, like... Um, I don't know if you're familiar with BDSM toys. Yes, 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 he had yes, on yes. a full chest harness with, like, the loop and everything. And he was just like, yeah, I'm doing this. Oh, like, I need to find that picture. Yeah, I'm doing this. <laughs> I was just like, yes. That was the biggest thing for me. I was just like, yo, you wildin'. Um, and I... That was a bold move. It it is because that shit had the internet going crazy. I was like, yo, y'all, he he's listen. He kicks ass because he sees that there's a need for this. Everybody sees that there's a need for this, and there are some people who see it and they're still tiptoeing around the idea. And there's some people uh-huh. who see it and they're actually doing something about it. They're bringing awareness to it. And you know what I'm saying? It's it's important. Visibility is vital. Like I keep saying over and over again. So. You bring in awareness to this, and people are probably looking like, what the heck is he wearing over his <laughs> tuxedo? And then everybody else who knows is like, listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because in the 
the bear community they they like if you go to like the gay bars and wilton manners and stuff like george's alibi and stuff Mm -hmm. like that they they are out there in harnesses and full leather and all all the toys and fun stuff so that (laughs) they do not (laughs) but you know what I'm saying they also have who is it um Darla Anderson when she got um awarded best animated feature she thanked her wife when she was doing her acceptance speech and I'm just like y'all come through y'all I commend every single one of them for that mm-hmm. to stay this out and open and I hope the Oscar did not just do this for gimmick and actually continue to do this and not just do it because it's the only day. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, they're we're all taking baby steps. Everyone's taking baby steps and we're trying to move in a direction. Like, you know, like we talked about the gay agenda uh, manifesto and things like that and <clears throat> the reason they use the name. And you see it in all of today's culture. Like, that is why they're using it because at the end of the day, like I keep saying, people just want to be treated equally. Like, that's really all it comes down to. You get me? Like, it's not you know, we're trying to convert people to being gay. We're trying to poison the children and all these other things. It's not, it's none of the shit that people like straight ignorant people are quote unquote afraid of. Like, (laughs) I don't understand why it's so hard for people to understand that you just want to be treated like a human being. Like it's human rights. Like, it's human rights. They, <laughs> like, it's as simple as that. We're not asking for nothing special. We're not asking for no plaques. We're not, as- we're not asking for nothing. Just treat us equally. Treat us like, like human beings. Exactly. Like, don't shun us from media. Don't shun us from, you know what I'm saying, other things. You see two gay people walking, holding hands in public. Don't look at them crazy or say nasty things Mind to the them. and keep it moving. Exactly. Yeah, regular people holding hands. Just like all these girls out here that we've been holding their best friend's hands because they don't want to do talk to them. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. But they get hate for that shit too because I know friends that are, I have a friend that's straight that used to do that when we were in high school. She'd tell people I'm her girlfriend so that they wouldn't talk to her. Like they'd be like, oh no, I'm with my girlfriend. And people are like, mm, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And psh, like that, that all that shit has to go. But <laughs> ignorance of people, I think it's more they don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand, but hey, they'll get it sooner or later because, trust me, it's hitting them at every angle and they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Um. One of the things that was um brought to my attention via the Oscars, there's a a Chilean film called A Fantastic Woman. Um. Mm-hmm. It was a Daniel Vega, Daniela Vega, um became the first openly transgender person to ever present at the award show. Go Oscars. Oh. Yes. Um. The film is based on um based around a transgender actress and singer Mm -hmm. so like i said they're growing i mean black people are getting recognition too you know what i'm saying at the oscars but the lgbt thing i'm just like yo like i'm trying to figure out what these conversations were like when they were thinking about who to nominate and who to have presenting and who to do this like did they make a a conscious effort to incorporate LGBTQ people. You get me? Like, or is this something mm-hmm. that someone who was like, ha, huh, we're going to do this this year. Let me just sneak this in the ballot and sneak yeah, this that, in that's the... Yeah, that's what I don't want it to be. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like, in, in my heart of hearts, I feel like that's what it was. And I'm hoping that it wasn't. <laughs> so you don't think they planned it for exposure and... You know, conforming. I feel like they did it for their own reasoning because they're probably uh, getting, like everybody was doing the backlash of how uh, the Oscars are not uh, recognizing um, the black actresses and actors <laughs> and how long did it take them to actually do that now? Mm-hmm. Now, and now you have the LGBT community, now they not getting recognized because you have so much people in Hollywood that's either transgender or gay or whatever the case may be. Now that's the move. You do you did both of them in the same year. In mm-hmm. the same show. So you think they're so, doing it for ratings? If they, if they don't do it again next year, then I said it first. <laughs> See, they probably also realized the decline in viewers because people realize it over the years that y'all are full of shit. Basically, like the people who be winning these awards, the people who are at these award shows, like it is catered and centered around white people. 
So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they probably noticed that and was like, hey, let's find a way to boost these uh, views and see and get people talking about us again. You get me? And a part of me feel like that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, business is business is business. But don't try to do this because of just capitalizing off of, you know what I'm saying, views. Do this because it's something you actually care about and it's something that you actually respect and are trying to bring awareness to or or just giving people the respect they deserve. Don't give anybody any pity awards or any pity platforms or any of these things because, like I said, like, give people the things that they deserve. Like, don't use that as just a tool to capitalize and just for yourself just to win. You get me? Okay. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> like, whoa, I think the phone is dead. But... Another person that um, was nominated is another um, trans person, um, Yance Ford, or Yancey, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, sorry. Um, he's the first openly trans director nominated for an Oscar for the film Strong Island. It's about the murder of his brother. And, you know, of course, they talk about Adam Rippon and um, director Lee Unkrich. <laughs> he's a director from Mexico. And during his what speech... Movie was that? Um, Strong Island. Strong Island? I have to watch that. Yeah, I need to look at that too. Um, but during his speech, he was saying, you know, they try to make a step towards a world where all children can see characters in movies that look like themselves. Same thing I said about Elsa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're trying to do something. So the bottom line is see people that look like you and that's it. Like, <laughs> equality. Huh? What was that? And it gives hope to those people. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's one of the biggest things. Like you start with that. You start with giving people hope, and then it turns into something like, okay, this isn't just a once in a while thing. This is a okay. I'm all right because I'm a part of this group, and we are being represented. Like I can see myself doing this. Like you know what I'm saying. Like as far as careers, is like it's it affects things on so many different levels, and. A lot of people don't see or understand that. And <laughs> I don't I don't personally don't understand why, because it's as simple as, you know what I'm saying, when you see kids playing with Barbie dolls, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I know I have a friend who has a daughter who is always like, I don't buy my daughter anything but black Barbies. You know what I'm saying? Like Barbies with Afros, Barbies that are darker skin, Barbies white... that look like her. Exactly. So she doesn't idolize white a white identity like she doesn't think oh being white is pretty being white is normal you know what i'm saying like it's the same thing in an essence but whew. yeah that's 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 what i was saying about that you said you was about to go off about something what you wanted to go off about oh you you said you, you had some opinions about something earlier that we were talking about with um the topics was it the RuPaul I'm thing? Hold on. <laughs> you sound like you was hype. What were the topics we had? Um, RuPaul, trans women and drag race, Toys R Us, gay Elsa. <laughs> Other than Toys R Us telling people that they it's their fault that they're going out of business because <laughs> they're not having kids, that was not interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I mean, get stuff together. Well, I mean, they're not. There's nothing to get together anymore. They calling it quits. They're folding. Yeah, and can they? Nobody remembers Toys R Us. This generation all know about iPads. And stuff. Yeah, I just think that comment was unnecessarily made, and they're bitter. It's about it. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, nobody likes to lose. <laughs> Like, they're taking the biggest L right now. Like, Toys R Us was the biggest company for the longest time. Like, I mean, when I was living in Jamaica up until, like, my whole youth, basically, Toys R Us was the shit. Like I said, we used to, yo, you behave, we go to Toys R Us. Like, you know what I'm saying? And Toys R Us had everything from puzzles to video games to freaking Legos, Barbie. Like, every toy that you could think of was in Toys R Us. It's fucking Toys R Us. You know what I'm saying? So... Toys R Us was the shit. So imagine you being at the top of your game, you know what I'm saying? And then just watching your numbers and fall. Down, falling flat on your face? Yeah, like, <laughs> of course you're going to be bitter. I don't understand why I, they didn't... I mean, they should have blamed these people for not wanting to have sex and have babies. 
I mean, you can't blame those people for that. You can't. I mean, maybe people are getting more responsible. Maybe they're, you know, pro-choice. But whatever the situation is, you can't blame somebody. Like I said earlier, you got to, you know, grow with the times, find a way to do it. Because like Blockbuster, Blockbuster was a shit when I was growing up, too. I used to love Blockbuster. OK, like Blockbuster from VHS days and DVDs, like, you know what I'm saying? Blockbuster was a shit. Blockbuster went out of business and they had the opportunity to work with Netflix. They could have join forces with Netflix and look at where Netflix is now. I'm saying Netflix is kicking ass right now. So imagine if Blockbuster didn't, you know, untuck their heads from their asses and be like, all right, let's do this deal. How are we going to do this? Because Netflix gives you the opportunity to rent DVDs. Like some things aren't even available for streaming. You have to get the DVDs, like whatever they are. But there are some things that are like that. So that could have been the source for Blockbuster to still, you know what I'm saying, be in the game. But Blockbuster gone. You ask kids nowadays about Blockbuster, they're going to be like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to grow at the times. If you see you have a decline in something and someone is offering you or you see what kids are into, you see what the generation is, you know what I'm saying, is into right now. Like, of course, fads grow out, things grow out, but technology is always developing. So you can't look at me like, oh, iPads are going to phase out. Yeah, right. <laughs> Apple comes out with a new <laughs> a new device every year, like every two years. Like there's something popping. Every September to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can't look at it and be like, oh, no, they're not. You know what I'm saying? Like kids have, you know, Android tablets and other tablets because their parents are like, I'm not buying you a fucking iPad. But either way, there are options. If the kid doesn't know better, they're going to, it does the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So some kind of item source tool that mimics or goes hand in hand with that you could they could have done something they could there's a way they could have grown with the times and still stayed in business and still been profitable or upgraded v tech tours exactly <laughs> you know what i'm saying i have um there's a lady at my, <laughs> that shops at my job that buys all of our v tech stuff all the watches all the pad like the little v tech pads the little computers and i'm trying to figure out what the hell is she doing <laughs> with these because who is still using these? But I mean, she buys them. So obviously she's doing something with them. She buys them all. Like literally every time they go up, she's buying them. Like she comes and picks up orders and it is literally like 10, 15, 20 VTech items. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, whatever the case is, but like I said, there's options. They could have figured out ways to make it happen. <laughs> you get me? So if you, yeah, I don't know. You can't be bitter if you didn't do something to, they didn't want to spend the money because they know they needed it when they took bankruptcy and closed. But if they spent the money, they could have stayed in business. They're bougie. They're bougie. <laughs> well, bougie and broke. So, I mean, that's that. But I don't know. Whatever. Like I said, I hope this means that I don't get to see kids on leashes anymore. <laughs> and... <laughs> And you're saying, you don't want to get me started about this whole leashes and kids thing, okay? <laughs> Why not? Start it up. <laughs> no, I used it doesn't make no sense. I, I used to think that shit was crazy until I started seeing it more and more. And I was like, oh, so y'all are really doing this? Like, y'all really think it's okay to buy these harnesses and strap your kids to it like they're a freaking dog and walk them? Like, what? <laughs> Yeah. This no, when you go to Disney World, that shit is where you see that. Like overload. Like they are everywhere. They got the little monkey ones, they got like all the little animals and stuff, so it looks quote unquote cute, but your kid's still on a leash. There's nothing cute I just think that. those parents that have those have no control over their kids whatsoever and decided to treat them like pets and just drag them everywhere they want them to go. Or have them drag them because I've seen kids haul an ass and their kids <laughs> their parents are behind them like Tell stop. You for all the people that got leashes on their kids and never beat their kids' asses, it's either you put your foot in their neck or you're just going to be ran for your, the whole rest of your life by these kids. So Some people don't kids. believe in Some people don't believe in beating kids. You know, they feel like they can... Okay, putting them in timeouts is not going to work. It works for some kids. Or you're having full-blown conversation with kids that have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Oh, come yeah, Ma, through. I will never do it again. Yeah, and they back at it again doing a foolishness. True. Psychology has done so many researches and experiments and statuses and all these things that show like statistics that, you know what I'm saying, you attach a bad or negative thing to 
a repercussion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's different ways of, you know, issuing repercussions. There's physical, you can beat someone or whatever, a spanking, a slap or whatever, pow pow, wherever you come from, whatever you call it, bus ass, whatever. And, you know, there's also time out or you take whatever it is that they're most fond of away from them. And I personally, I believe in beating ass. <laughs> I got my ass beat. I think I turned out okay. But um, some people don't believe in that, even though they got beatings growing up. And I can understand why, but some people also don't understand the difference between discipline and abuse. <laughs> so they, instead of like, quote unquote, risking it and, you know, quote unquote, damaging the child, because now I'm hearing that beatings are damaging children mentally. And like I said, there's a difference between abuse and discipline. But there's there's all these arguments for why you shouldn't beat your children. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there's legal action. You know, people don't want DCF to get called on them. <laughs> um, child program, welfare, pair, like all these things. Like, you know what I'm saying? Kids, we want to call the police. And I'm like, yo, when I was a kid, I wish I could call the police on my mama when I was getting Man. beat. <laughs> You put your phone if you want to. Listen, my mama told me if I call the police, I can go with them. I was like, mm, I'm gonna stay and get this ass whooping. Come back. <laughs> Don't come back. Exactly. I mean, like Eddie Griffin said, his mama beat him out of the penitentiary. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, listen, look at the people who should be. You know what? <laughs> the amount of people doing all these mass shootings and oh wait. We didn't talk about that. Um, what happened the, the other day? The one happened in Maryland. Yes, and the one in Texas, the bombing in, Texas. in Texas. Yeah, it was oh, in Austin. Oh, the bomber yeah. in Texas that killed the little kid so because he was cornered by the cops and decided that you're not gonna take me, I'm gonna take out myself. Yeah. I wonder if they got and beatings. <laughs> huh? I wonder if any of these people got beatings growing up. Um, maybe abused. See, and that's what I'm saying. The difference between Maybe discipline abuse. and abuse. There's a huge difference. It, but people in Texas do need to be careful because apparently there's still some out there, oh, some gosh. bombs out there that um didn't go off. That he yet. unleashed out. It hasn't gone off yet. So for those people in Texas, do they even have safe. like a, a an area where they might be? Any kind of idea of where no, he may? Have they don't have it. It's like spread it over all over Texas. So. There's no general idea. I mean, from what I read, they found one and mm -hmm. they have it in custody where that one didn't explode. Oh, the okay. other ones that did go off, they reached too late. Oh, yeah, because I have a friend that's in Texas and he posted, you know, Facebook lets you post it, let your friends know that you're safe and all this. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's where I first saw it. I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, and then, you know, our boss came and was talking about it and I looked at it. I was like, yo. The yeah, people... um, I'm not going nowhere in any, any boxes that I know I did not pay for. Yeah, no. I'm yeah. sure. Because, you know, I feel like there's going to be replicas. There's mm -hmm. going to be copycats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going near any boxes. Remember they used don't to send, send people anthrax and all this stuff in the mail? Yeah, and all I mean, when it comes to black people, black people don't open their mail anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny you say that. Them. I checked my mail today That's and it. I was like, I feel like... I didn't check my mail like all week, so I was like, I went in there and I checked, and I was see? like, oh, okay. See? <laughs> see, you would never, you see, you, and if you saw it on the news, you wouldn't open your mail still. Probably, just yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. But I probably mean, throw all that away and wait for the next set. But like that was nice. But see, all my mail is stuff that I know. Like I got my edition of Out magazine with all these wonderful uh, trans and drags on the cover. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, it's lit. But um, yeah, I don't. If I don't notice the name, I don't. If there's no name, <laughs> nope. I'm not touching anything. I'm not opening nothing. Like no part. For real. And like the way my apartment's set up, they have a little box for like recycled paper. So <laughs> if I don't know who it is, trash. That's not right going. In that box. Sure does. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I hope, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. That shit's wild. That shit's wild. Because. What was the other thing? Oh, did you hear about the bridge in Miami that collapsed? The what now? The bridge um, by FIU. They're building a bridge for like... Oh, um, yeah, the, the, the bridge that wasn't open. Yeah, the walkover. Yeah, they weren't at that time. Thankfully, it wasn't open yet. But at the same time, I feel like they should have 
had that area blocked off still. You know what I'm saying? Because they were still working at it. Driving under it. Yes. And people getting stuck. Mm-hmm. And I remember a guy, I saw the news, a guy actually said he saw one of the victims that got their hand before he took his last meal. Yeah. And, and that in itself is devastating to lunch. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so they I, got I, a I, call I, that I there was a crack and they were still working on it. So, I mean, there's that. And also, I saw that they were doing like a rush thing to like free up traffic so that they can. And I'm like, listen, I always talk about shit like that because we live in South Florida. Hurricanes happen. These things need to be able to withstand. You're trying to put up this thing in two minutes. How how many miles per hour winds is going to take for this shit to blow over? You get what I'm saying? So... I'd rather them be safe and keep the shit blocked off, like how 441 is always under construction, lanes are blocked off. But <laughs> it's whatever. I don't know. I, 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 that's the part I didn't get. I don't understand why. Even though the bridge itself was closed, that whole section should have been blocked off since it wasn't done. It was still under construction. I don't think it's safe for cars to be driving under it if you're still technically working on it. Exactly. But, but I mean. Hey, I don't go to FLU. <laughs> That's horrible. But, I mean, thank you for calling in. You know, we had a great conversation. Um, I want to thank everyone who's listening live. Thank you for listening. Sorry about earlier. We had some technical difficulties. <laughs> um, for everyone listening, um, as usual, every other week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you for tuning in. And, you know, follow us on everything. Pointless Talks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. The whole nine. <laughs> Thank you.